Hello everyone, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim, where World Update 15 has recently been released, and it is covering Greenland and the Nordics. Uh, we have had a Scandinavian update before, but this is refining it, I presume. There is also an update to that Scandinavian update, uh, so we have more stuff for up here. Uh, but I really still wish that South America, Africa, and most of Asia, except for Japan, got more coverage, or throw in Japan as well. The, Japan update, the first world update, was the smallest by far of all of them at 2 gigabytes. This update for Greenland and the Nordics is 16.42 gigabytes. And it's second only to the Oceania and Antarctica update, which was 20 gigabytes. Uh, the two US updates combined was about 13. So it's a huge update. So I want to take a look and see if we have a nice Greenland now. I do cross Greenland every now and again on my around the world trips. It's a necessary stopping point. Uh, for the planes that don't have quite the long range of, say, airliners and such. So, yeah, I do frequent this part of Greenland. I don't care so much about the upper part of Greenland, but the lower part of Greenland I do want to make sure looks nice. And if it's going to be 16, a 16 gigabyte update, it had better look really good. But seriously, though, um, you know, uh, yeah, I, I don't know about the economics of the thing, but, you know, us us people who live in the United States really do want to fly to other places. I'm sure Europeans don't only want to fly in Europe. Uh, they would like points of interest. I know that there's not a whole lot of photogrammetry available for these areas, but just points of up, uh, points of interest. The points of interest I have in Africa are all added by freeware mods right now. So most of those were one freeware mod. And then there's a, a mod that added a bunch of stuff in Rift Valley there. And I have many airport mods for India, for instance. So, yeah. Uh, but I think Sobo and Microsoft might be able to do something about these areas, uh, adding more points of interest, mainly points of interest and airports. Uh, so, yeah. Please. Anyway, uh, let's check out Greenland then and see if it's been spruced up and if it's worth the 16 gigabyte update. I, I, I know there's other sites around, but... Uh, we'll get to that some other time. Greenland is a place that I stop over at quite a lot, so because it's the most convenient way for small planes to cross the Atlantic. And let's go with this route, which will take us from BGKK up to there's a there's an and uh, 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 there's an Arctic station right there, and so we're going to go up there BGJN and then come down the coast to Nassarswak, which is where I normally stop over on the cross Atlantic flights. Though. Uh, if some of these airports look uh, good and that uh, one over there, uh, CYFB, is good, then maybe we could go a little bit more northerly instead of cutting down here. We'll see. Okay, so here we are. I've decided to fly the F-14 since it can go fast, but it can also go slow and it has a decent range. So there's the DC Designs F-14 and there's the B variant. And let us go. So, this is the vicinity of, well, we have actually two airports around here, but BGKK. There's also a GW06, which is a seaport. We'll turn around this way. Still, uh, considering we're so close to the airport, uh, awful straight lines on that ice, huh? So from here we're going inland to a location called Dai 3, D-Y-E-3, that was a special point. Landscape itself looks okay at 10,000 feet, that certainly could be worse. Greenland, Greenland is always a tough thing to get a good rendition of and of course this version of Flight Sim undoubtedly has the best version of any other flight sim. There's no question about that. This part of the, of the train looks pretty good. A little bit more detail here than inland. I like the rumble. We're at 42,000 feet. Once again breaking the sound barrier there. That's not exactly how that works, but okay. Mostly, Greenland is still a featureless void. 
doesn't take getting too far inland before it loses all definition. The direction we're pointed in right now is actually right along the coast. And, you know, details are fairly moderate. Pit 14 is behaving somewhat weirdly at these speeds. So our ground speed is about a thousand knots right now, Mach 1.8, it's still a little bit wiggly. Okay, time to descend. Yeah, wow, I'm just pushing down on the stick, it wobbles all over the place. So, taking a look at die 3. Well, I, I think this is the ground. <laughs> um, that's the ground. It's not a fluffy cloud. That's actually the ground. I wish there was at least some definition on the ground here. Give me a sense of things. The radar altimeter is just below 1000 there. You can see. I wish it had more to it than a limit of 1,000, but that's what it's got. Um, see something up ahead. Well, I guess that must be die three. Here we've got a little bit more definition. Alright, there it is. Some little station. On we go. Oh, there's an ice core site. Part of the die section of the distant early warning line, the dew line. I thought as much. I thought it'd be called dew something, but okay. I didn't realize that they had sections like die and all that. I know about the dew line. So, it's an ice core site though. So, they're doing research there. Next... Next up is VGSF. And forgive me, I'm probably not going to be able to pronounce a lot of these locations. Kangerlussuak. I know. Obviously, that's wrong, but BGSF will have to do. They put a fly-by-wire. Well, it's off. Stability augmentation's off. I can't actually turn them on. But I couldn't fl flick those switches. It's a bit, bit hard to handle this thing, though. I don't remember it being like this. But. So as far as the geographic updates, they do only mention Iceland, Norway, and Sweden. Though they also say fresh aerial imagery and satellite data across the entire region, which presumably includes Greenland. I mean, there's very little you can do with Greenland except improve the mesh a little bit, or the terrain look. So far, I haven't noticed too much. There, there are new airports, I think. And I'm sure there are particular locations that look better. We'll see. Hopefully on the west coast, it'll be better than on the east coast. Wow, we're at 66,000 feet. And at least we've got some definition on the ground here. I can see where the ground is and distinguish it from clouds. That's nice. Mach 2.1. We're still a ways away from the coast. So we'll see whether this airport BGSF is serviceable. It seemed to have a long runway. Normally I use BGBW out from CYYR or CYYT, but there's an argument to be made for a more northerly route, especially if the runway is longer than the one at BGBW. And this one is 9,181 feet. 
which is pretty darn good. The one at BGBW is 6,359, which is not small, but some planes might not be able to handle that very well. Well, this area isn't looking horribly bad. It isn't looking spectacular either. But yeah, uh, some of these textures are ones that I generally like to see. Give a better definition to things. Yep, that right there is BGSF. Pretty much covered in snow. Not too bad. A lot of extra buildings. Whoops, a little bit of delay there. It's sort of generic, but you know. Could use a snow plow. But yeah, BGSF everyone. Fairly large airport. Good place to stop over. And on we go. So there's the landscape over here, obviously closer to the coast now. A little bit more definition. Still some rough patches though. By rough patches I mean patches that don't look quite super realistic. This landscape, the scars here look good though. I like that. I do stop over at Iceland quite a bit and it is a good question whether their improvements make the Orbix Iceland mesh unnecessary or not. I don't know, maybe they conflict, I don't know how that gets resolved. Because of course Orbix had their Iceland mesh which was available for free I think. And now there's been mesh updates with this update and I don't know whether I should uninstall the Iceland mesh or not. Probably. But I'm not sure. I'll have to check on that. Okay, diving into BGJN. Oh, I saw a little light there. Oh, there's a light, light there. I think that's it. Well, not as small as I thought it was, considering it's only 2,787 feet. It's one of those interesting landing locations. We'll just buzz it. Okay, well, not a whole lot to see here. There are some buildings there, though. Alright, so that was BGJN. And there's some other buildings over here. There's a little town here. And we're going across over to the Arctic Station. That's that town. Iluit. Ilulisat, Ilulisat. That's the best I can do. Don't recall seeing a jagged line on the ice before. I think that must be because of the lighting conditions. It's a little bit weird. It's breaking my immersion as we approach the Arctic Station. Um, there's a town here. Maybe it's the whole town? I don't know. Oh, uh, maybe it's up there, that little post? Uh, or... Maybe there's a hut there too. Uh, the, the scenery looks a lot better around here, I'll give it that. We've passed it, I don't know what it is though. I'll try and come around again. But yeah, around here, landscape looking good. much better than in the other areas before, that's for sure. But, you know, what can you do with blankets of ice? Well, far as I can tell, it's this area right here. This is the Arctic Station. And then maybe these masts as well. So, that's that. That's what it is. Probably better when it's not so frosted over. 
There are a couple of small airports along the way, uh, Sisimut, uh, BGSS, and then Maniksok, BGMQ, before we get to Nuuk, which is uh, 3,100. The other two are 2,500-ish feet in length. Well, this is a nice view. We ascend above the clouds, but we're not trying to look at the clouds, though. Okay, back down below the car clouds again to see BGSS. Around here, the landscape looks okay-ish. Of course, my standards might have gone down since... <laughs> oh no, there's, there's a chunk here that's sort of missing, isn't there? There's definitely... That sheer wall is definitely not supposed to be like that, huh? Okay, I take it back, yeah. I mean, uh, I was about to say my standards have dropped a bit potentially, but there, that's an uh, obvious mistake right there. Okay, where is this Sisimi? Oh, there it is. Nice of them to have the lights on. I think they probably added more lights to these airports just to make them easier to spot. There probably added really super bright lights, <laughs> I feel like. Because otherwise they're a little bit hard. Pretty sure it's not so well lit, but there we are. That's BGSS. Onward. Just hanging out among the clouds here. Really, who needs fancy terrain when you can have clouds after all? Well, I'm running out of fuel here, though, so we're probably not gonna drop into BGMQ. I think I'll, I will drop into Nuke, but I think I'll skip BGMQ and try and go higher for better efficiency. I'll have to fly the DCS F-14 again to see how wobbly that one is to compare. Just to refresh my memory. I mean, that one was pretty lively, a very organic feel to it. But that was more at lower speeds than higher speeds, so. Well, that's a nice landscape right there that we're plumbing it, plummeting into, at least from this height. Area of nuke looks better. Ah, well, I think we can see it over there. Ah, I missed flying directly over the runway there as I was looking at the map for our next location. Right, interesting little town. Things sort of flickering in though. What's up with that? Yeah, I don't know what all the flickering is around here though. Hmm. Things are subtly changing. And I'm facing a 54 knot headwind in this case. Okay, well, I think I'm going straight for BGBW. Uh, let me try and look up how long the runway is at BGET. 2,621. Yeah, we're not landing there, so let's just skip that. It's not a good enough airport for the transatlantic journeys, I don't think. Except for very small planes. Or SEOL planes. Well, I've got very little fuel left. It's beeping. Uh, it says 2,500 pounds. Well, it's a little bit difficult to say exactly how much, but we're below bingo fuel here. The fact that the altimeter calibration says 20.92 instead of 29.92, which we all know it is at, is a factor of the 
digits, the way that they've done the digits on those tickers rounds in a weird way. So because it's close to zero on that digit, because it's close to 30 inches of mercury, it goes with zero, it actually rounds up. Which is not exactly how that's supposed to happen. And I know how to code it so that it doesn't do that, so <laughs> I'm criticizing something that I would know how to stop. We've got clouds again. And we're headed into BGBW. That's our swap. So the environs of BGBW. It did look pretty good before anyway, so it's, and it's still looking okay now. I don't know if they did anything to it. Whoa, it suddenly jerks to the left sometimes, which it probably ought not to do. Hmm. Ah, th there again. Okay, and we're down. Yep, uh, okay. Okay, we have landed at BGBW. And all is well. And I really don't have much fuel left. So, didn't hit all the sites that I wanted to, but hit a good number of them. And that has been our tour of Greenland. I feel like... They probably spent most of the 16 gigabytes on somewhere else, not Greenland. What else have we got? Walker Air Transport? Interesting. Alright. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.